Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the time that I was addicted to Magic the Gathering Online and I spent many thousands of dollars on it. I was addicted to drafting. It is very easy to just say, hey, I'm going to draft. It's 2 a.m. at night. I'm going to draft. Oh, it's 5 p.m. at Friday. I'm going to draft. And sometimes I would not go to FNM because I had to finish my draft. Now, drafts, when it was maybe two years ago, took a lot of time. You were just waiting and waiting and waiting. So drafting wasn't something that you can do as fast. Anyway, what I'm showing you is my Fire Emblem accounts. And this is a new game, obviously. I love Fire Emblem. My favorite characters are the dragons. And during the time they have new characters, uh, one of them was a dragon dancer. So clearly I spent a lot of money trying to get my dragon dancer, which I didn't get. And I literally just couldn't spend any more money. Like it came to a point, as you can see, I think it happened around probably April 1st, April 2nd, April 13th. And that's around, what is that, $130 worth of uh, trying to get a dragon. Now, to compound it, I have two accounts. You might ask, why do I have two accounts? That's why I, I asked Nintendo to name it, same question. And the answer was because like there's one for your iPad and there's one for your iPhone. At least in Magic Duels, it's like the same account, so you share the cards. But back to my story of how I was addicted to Magic Online. Magic Online, the platform is terrible. I don't think anyone's been, you know, it's not going to win any uh, user interface or user experience awards anytime soon. Uh, I mean, the best possibility for it to win would have been like 2000 when it first came out, <laughs> maybe like 1990 something. Anyways, so when we, I talk about being addicted to Magic Online, it is a truly an addiction because you keep on a you want to keep drafting and drafting and drafting and should should they make a mobile game or a game on my iPad and one of the reasons actually primarily reason now that I consider it the reason I no longer have or spend money on Magic Online is due to the fact all my laptops at home are Macs so because I own a marketing agency, we only use Macs. We are a graphic design firm, and it would be kind of ridiculous for us not to use Macs. I think our clients would laugh us out of the building. So anyway, this is one of my accounts. Let me see, I, this, is a, this is my iPad account, and I recently got Ike. I spent a lot of money on this one character, and I'm okay doing that digitally because I am I work in digital marketing, so I understand that digital stuff has value and that you should support the creators who make this game. So I don't have any problem. So I got an Ike. His IVs are not good, but I'm not going to keep pulling for another Ike. And I also got a Mist, which uh, I don't know why I was pulling colorless orbs, but I was. Anyway, that's for like Fire Emblem fans. So I was super addicted to Magic Online because it was a, when I had my Alien laptop, I don't know why, I was a coder, I was a developer at that time, I was learning development, so I felt like I should get a Alienware laptop, which it's no good, it's way too expensive for what it does. So I was playing Magic Online, and every day I was probably doing a draft, sometimes you would plus, and then sometimes you would just go really, really bad. It would be extremely bad. You would put in two to three drafts a day, especially on weekends. And uh, this happened also when I was at with my friend, we were learning development together and he got into magic. I got into magic. We play a lot of magic online. This was two years ago. And we just dumped a ton of money on, on the game. And I feel like did eternal masters come out then or the dual lands. And I was gonna dump a ton more money into the system but then it started bugging out like crazy it was during the epic time where every other day there was like a bug and you couldn't log on or your trade system didn't work or something was wrong oh they, they were switching to a new edition that's what happened they were going to the new edition 
and, and you know, that's always hard in software, but it shouldn't have been that difficult. Um, most times when people switch over to a new edition, they can do it like maintenance takes a night uh, for large pieces of software because you're not designing your software. It's like, it's not like you've tested the software over and over again. So, you know, you just have to update it. It's not like you just upload it and you didn't test it and then everything goes wrong and you're like, oh, why did this go wrong? No, it's your on a developer server, which sometimes is live. It's just not public. And that's where people test it. So I make mobile apps. I make them on iOS and Android. Oh, I, I shouldn't say I make it. I manage the team that makes it. And the team is in Houston. They're really smart. Some of them are smarter than I am at development at least. And one of the things that I cannot wrap my head around is just how much money would Magic make? Yu-Gi-Oh! was already making a ton of money from their mobile app. Just handfuls of money, right? How much, thank, thankfully, Magic has not made a mobile app or I would be screwed because the amount of money I spent on Magic Online, you know, being booted out and, you know, having to like, you know, the cashier, like just like killing my computer pretty much. And just the waiting time, the loading, I just got to wait for like everything to happen. And you're like, okay, when is the time, when is it going to happen? I have saved a lot of money due to Magic Online's bad AI. Because I'm the type of person who buys a ton of stuff online, digital. So if I want Ike, so I wanted Ike on both of my accounts. And that's what I did. I just kept spending money until I got Ike. And I was like, oh, cool. And the ratios, the way I do it is I don't get that many five stars, but I get a higher chance of the one I want, the unit I want, because I'm willing to spend money. I don't want to spend money and get a unit I don't want. So a lot of times my focus rates and my unit rate, so if you play Fire Emblem, you know what this is. Uh, they get up to five or six. This is four and a half. I, like, and then I stopped screenshotting it. I'm sure it was a lot more. Because I got like, oh, four and a half. That's pretty cool. And that is what happens. So if Magic the Gathering ever got its act together and made a mobile game that allowed me to draft, I would be effed. I would spend so much money on that mobile game that I am actually, I'm grateful that for the incompetence of their developers. And you might be like, oh, don't make fun of their developments. I develop apps with a much lesser team and I know what goes on with app development. Uh, we actually just finished an app. We did a code sprint the last week. We just finished an app and it was very beautiful. The UI is always very good. And that's what I, you know, we are a graphic design firm. And that's why I pride myself in. But I would say it is uh, more, it's better. Or I don't want to say it's better. Maybe it's more complicated because it has to go through HIPAA compliance and stuff. And that is uh, very difficult. It has video, HIPAA compliance, um, medical stuff. And it was just completed and now has to be sent to another team, a senior team to go ahead, edit, make some code changes, and then they'll go public. So when you talk about mobile games, I am extremely blessed. When Pokemon Go came out, I did spend money on Pokemon Go. I'm not going to say how much money, but I will say that on FNM at whatever locals I would go to, I would buy enough lures that we could lure the whole place for six hours. And that would happen for every place because I, I felt like, hey, it's pretty cool. Why not do it? And that is how, actually no one in locals knew who I was until I did something, I did that. And they were like, wait, who's MTG Lions? Like, wait, and it's kind of funny because Travis actually tweeted something at me, how like someone in Mexico thought he was MTG Lion. Hopefully he didn't try to steal his cards because that would suck. But anyway, I just don't get recognized. When I went to a GP Houston, and Houston is my hometown, so and I told everyone I would be there. I told everyone I would be at the Strike Zone booth selling them cards because I do like Strike Zone and they've been very, very good to me. So I know some MTG finance people get offended by you know their grading, but yeah, it's like the guy's like, He's an older dude. He works with his family. I see his like daughter all the time, or son. I see like kids at his booth all the time, whenever, and that's what it is. I mean, how strict do you think it's going to be? Obviously, he's going to make sure that the cards are good. But I've seen him accept grades that I felt like were advantageous to me. I was like, okay, well, thank you. 
and they always round up and that's what you i can just what i would tell you about them they're very good they round up so they round up to like nearest five dollars whenever we do a big transaction they always give me like a free t-shirt i have i have a really good time and it's a good time because you get to talk about the cards they <laughs> they always raid my edh deck now that i think about it even yeah okay okay i'll, I'll Okay, whatever. So, if Magic Gathering ever got their act together and made a mobile game that was semi decent, it was like Magic Duels, but without the uh, without the fact that you can only play one Mythic and two rares, and without the fact that it's not draftable, and you would just own the cards and you don't need to trade them. So you don't need a trading function. Pokemon Go doesn't have a trading function. Fire Emblem Mobile does not have a trading function. I mean, at the end of the day, I wanted to, I'm the type of person to be heavily addicted to a game. Like, I love Fire Emblem. And when I saw like, you know, my favorite character is Lin. So I just kept pulling. She wasn't even a banner character. So it was very unlikely for me to get her. But I just kept pulling. And I just kept spending. And then eventually I got her. Now, if Magic did something like that and I could pull Falias, yeah. No, nah, I'd totally be down for that. Like, you know? I think Magic has a great IP. They just don't use it properly. And it really comes down to the fact that they have to get into 2017. In 2017, you got Mario Run, you got Pokemon Go, you got Fire Emblem, you got Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm, I'm playing that game. I'm spending money on that game. It's, it's exactly how I remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh! The cards are super basic and it's kind of fun. Sometimes it's kind of spotty. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm spending money on them. If Magic ever came out with a mobile game that I could play on my phone while I'm waiting at, you know, I actually have to get my car inspected. Yeah, I would spend money on while I'm at the inspection. I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I want some more units. I want some more cards. Okay, I want to do a draft. Um, that would be pretty cool. So they got to get their act together. And that is, you know, if I'm telling... Wizard of the Coast, the secret to making a lot of money is to make a decent mobile app that's not too expensive, but allow, you know, it's free to play for most players. And then the whales, so in, in terms of mobile app games, whales are people who spend a lot of money. The whales will subsidize everyone else. I'm okay with subsidizing everyone else. Like, you know, if that gets more people to play, then hey, better for, you know, developers. And that's how every mobile game is classic. Wait, uh, Class of Clans, even the, uh, who has a mobile game? I was, I was going to download it just to investigate what it was. Um, Kim Kardashian had a mobile game, and it makes millions of dollars, like, just, like, every other day. And it's not a bad mobile game. Like, I haven't played it, but my uh, developer, uh, she, she loves it. And we are, uh, one of our pet projects is we're making a development game similar to it. But instead of uh, purses and designer clothing, you just get animals. And then you level up the animals. So it's kind of like Neopets. It's exactly like Neopets. Anyway, bye guys.